Welcome back to Reformation and Revival Now, and we want to have prayer. We talked about getting out of the neutral zone through true faith, exposing the fictional or cultural Christianity, and walking in forgiveness. I want to ask those of you right now who've listened to me, no, I'm not the best speaker in the world. That's not the point. The point is God has a message for you to release all of those who have hurt you. All of those who have disappointed you. Some of you are not in ministry right now because a particular person, a Sunday school teacher, a superintendent, a pastor, an evangelist, or somebody that you looked up to talked bad to you, said you didn't have any calling, any anointing, anything, and you have never ever recovered from that. First of all, it doesn't matter what people think. Second of all, even if what he said had some validity to, you, to it. As long as Jesus, as long as you're number one with Jesus and you are, that's all that matters. Release that person. Bless that person. Speak God's blessing over them. And eliminate that debt. Some of you spouses out there, You've been so angry for years. My husband always humiliates me in front of other people. And I hate him. I hate him. But when you're around everybody, you just lovey-dovey and you're bumping shoulders. But as soon as you get home, you march upstairs to your room and he marches downstairs to his man cave. And you've been living like separate entities for the last five years. It's time to get free. Wife, forgive that man. No, he doesn't deserve it. But remember, we don't deserve to be forgiven, but God forgave us. Husband, forgive that wife. She's your life partner. Maybe she doesn't deserve your forgiveness. But God knows that we did not deserve his forgiveness. But he gave it anyway. Give it anyway, man. Give it anyway. And God will fill your heart with such love. He'll fill your heart with such faith. You know, I know that sometimes preaching like this seems tough. And it's, it's, it even seems kind of mean at times. But I'm going to tell you, I would rather you hate me. Then be in the neutral zone. Get out of there. Let faith in your heart come alive with the love of God. And begin to forgive everyone that the Holy Spirit brings to your mind. Everyone that the Holy Spirit begins to show you. This has been the key to some of the greatest move of God that I've ever heard of. And I want to tell you another little story about the great revivalist. He's gone now. Revivalist missionary, Bert Clendenin. Some of, you, some of you know him as B.H. Clendenin. He tells a story about him going to a, a church that used to be a great revival center um, back in, I think, in the 40s. But he had died. And he had, came, he had come as the evangelist. Him and his little daughter were up there praying. He looked at the place. It was once a beautiful building. Now it's all dull and nasty. and Nobody wants to pray. And So him and his little girl, they're praying before the service. And so for several nights, Burke Clendenin is preaching hard. And he's just hitting a boil. Preaching hard. Preaching so tough. And uh, one guy pulled him aside. He says, you know the last person that preached mean like you preaching? There's a guy in that congregation, I ain't going to tell you who, uh, took a rubber hose to him. And Bert said, oh my goodness. He started looking around to see if there was any rubber hoses around when he would leave. And he said that he'd keep preaching. He said no matter how hard he preached, they'd just bat their eyes at him. Bat his eyes. They bat their eyes. Looking, looking so sweet and nice. And so he said, his wife said to him, you know, when are you going to pour some oil into it? And Bert said, and, and it's with a sarcastic voice, if you remember how he talked, I can't pour any oil until I wound them. Well, anyway, Bert was praying. He says, yeah, it's time to put some oil in there. You're right. So him and his little girl, they prayed some more. And the word of the Lord came to Brother Clendenin, and it said, judgment must begin at the house of God. Needless to say, he preached that message with all of his heart. And then he said, now, 
he got to the altar call. He says, y'all come on down here and, and, and get to this altar now. We've been preaching all week. Now it's time to get right with the Lord. Time to mean business. They wouldn't budge. They were just looking at him with eyes that could kill. And he just said, well, the pastor's going to have a communion now. And, and, and he stood looking at the side door and saying, I better get out of here before that guy with the rubber hose comes. And he said as he was his looking around, he, 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 he turned back to where the pastor was, and the pastor was under the chair. You know, had three big chairs, you know, under the chair hiding. And he says, what's wrong, pastor? He says, son, you done killed every last one of us. And so he gets up, the pastor says, uh, he ain't going nowhere. So Bert says, well, the pastor's going to give communion. The pastor says, I'm not doing nothing. So Bert said, well, you guys come on down here now, right now. And Bert's trembling in his heart. And finally he said he heard the, the screech. He said it sounded like it came from hell. And he screeched out. And the guy said, ah! I swore I'd starve you to death. And threw down this boot that was just full of money. Just full of money. And when he led that, 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 that hold him back, he had had, he had had anger against the pastor for years and tried to get him out of the church by st stealing the tithe. He was a huge giver. And I tell you, after that boy was hit, everybody started confessing, started coming down. Some had this against this sister. Some were living in adultery. Some had stolen from their jobs. And they were just weeping at that altar. And Bert doesn't know what to do. He's seeing all this stuff come in. And he said while the people were, were, were just repenting and, and crying out. He says he looked up and he saw this cloud of glory come in. He said he saw it come in. And he said everything in that room was filled with the Holy Ghost. What will God? What 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 won't God do if if we're willing to forgive? If we're willing to make it right? I want to pray with you right now. Those of you who've been listening to me and putting up with me for these four messages, I want to pray with you right now. I want to ask you to not only get right with God, but get right with your brother, get right with your sister, get right with your husband, get right with your wife, get right with your pastor. Get right with your Sunday school superintendent. Get right with your boss. Get right with that grocery clerk that made you so mad in the store. You said, I'll never ever go to that store again. Curse it be Wegmans. It's time for you to get free today. Let's pray. Father, there are many people hearing me today right now. Bound up. But in the name of Jesus, Lord God, I speak, Lord God, the word of deliverance. And by the blood of Jesus, Lord, I release grace upon every listener to hear this word, Lord, and be set free, Lord God, from a bitter heart and out of that neutral zone. Lord, launch them out of that neutral zone and show them the grace of divine freedom that comes when, Lord God, forgiveness, Lord God, is received. Some, Lord God, need to say, I'm sorry. Some need to say, I'll forgive you. Lord God, I'm trusting your Holy Spirit now. Lord, you direct the people with power, Lord Jesus. Give witness that this is the word of God. And set your children free, every last one of them, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. I hope this has been a blessing to you. I don't have time to to do full altar calls. These, these are not designed for that. But if this has blessed you in any way, please write me or Sultana. Uh, I don't post that much and I don't even have time to look at a lot of a lot of my comments. Not that I get that many, but I'm just letting you know. If Jesus has done something for you, let me know. But more importantly, let the person know that you forgave. Tell them you love them. Tell them you're so glad that God brought them in, in, in your life. Hallelujah. Well, God bless you. This is Brother Kevin saying that Jesus loves you, and I love you, and most of all, he loves you enough to send this word, because he wants the best for you. He's got a plan for your life, and I tell you, that plan is harvest and revival. God bless you, and I'll see you in another video soon. Bye-bye.